God's people, the Jews, were in great danger. A wicked man called Haman wanted to destroy them. Letters had been sent throughout the Persian Empire with orders to kill them all on a certain day. But the queen, Esther, was secretly a Jew herself. She was going to plead with the king to stop this from happening. One night, after the king had been feasting with Esther and Haman, he couldn't sleep. He asked to read a book that recorded important events. The king read about a man called Mordecai, Esther's cousin, who had stopped a plot to kill the king. What honour has been given to Mordecai for this? the king asked. Nothing, his men told him. So the king asked to see Haman. Haman hated Mordecai. He had made some gallows for him to be hanged on. But when Haman came into the king, the king asked him, What shall I do for a man I want to honour? The king was talking about Mordecai, but Haman thought, He wants to honour me. So he said, you should give him some of the king's robes and one of the king's horses and put a royal crown on his head and he should be led through the city for everyone to see. Get the robes and the horse, the king said, and do that to Mordecai the Jew. So Mordecai was honoured and Haman was miserable. Later that day, Haman went back to the palace for another feast with King Ahasuerus and Queen Esther. The king knew that Esther wanted a favour from him, so he asked her what it was. Please, O king, spare me and my people, she said, for we are going to be destroyed. Who is going to do this thing? asked the king. A foe and enemy, said Esther. This wicked Haman! Then Haman was terrified. The king, in his anger, stormed out into the garden and Haman begged Esther for his life. When the king came back in and saw Haman fallen before Esther, he ordered Haman to be taken away and hanged on the very gallows he had built for Mordecai. Then the king gave all Haman's house to Esther, who put her cousin Mordecai in charge of it. Then Esther pleaded for Haman's evil plan to be stopped. The king agreed, and letters were written to cancel the orders to kill all the Jews. The letters also said that the Jews could defend themselves from anyone who tried to attack them. And in every city where the king's command was heard, there was gladness and joy among the Jews, a feast and a holiday. When the day came on which Haman had planned to kill the Jews, the Jews struck down all who still tried to attack them, and the empire officials helped them and many enemies of the Jews were destroyed. Mordecai then wrote letters to the Jews, telling them to keep the 14th and 15th days of that month as a special feast day every year, to celebrate the great deliverance. These days were called Purim, and every year after, the Jews remembered how they had been saved. And Mordecai became very great, second in rank after King Ahasuerus, and he always sought the good and well-being of all his people. The story of Esther shows us how God overthrows his people's enemies. He is the one who arranged everything so that his people weren't destroyed but were delivered. And he overthrows even greater enemies through Jesus, sin, death and Satan. He saves everyone who puts their faith and trust in him.